My name is Bruce. I own a 67 VW Bug. Uh, I've been in VW since 1958, so I want to show some of you newcomers some old-timer tips. Today we're going to share one of the two ways to keep these motors, these air-cooled old VW motors, running healthy for a very, very long time. The two things you can do is keep the oil changed and the valves adjusted every 3,000 miles. Today we're going to do a valve adjustment. Okay, so here's what we're going to need. The appropriate valve cover gaskets, 13 millimeter, 21 millimeter, nice screwdriver, feeler gauge, opened to the six thousandths um, feeler gauge blade. That's what these valves were adjusted at, dead cold. I let my car sit overnight. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is put it on cylinder number one. The firing order on these things is 1432, but when you adjust the valves, you uh, will run the motor backwards, so to speak, uh, turn the motor backwards, and so that will be a 1234 firing order, is what it would be. But uh, for valve adjustments, that's the best way to go. So, here's what we do pop your distributor cap. I pull this puppy off because what we got to do is get it ready to fire on cylinder number one. This is where your 21 millimeter comes in. You're going to turn your motor over by hand. No, you need to be off, not on. <laughs> and that's a timing mark, but that's not the main timing mark. So what we're going to do is go all the way around. The motor turns clockwise. It runs clockwise. I am turning that way now. This is the best way to do it. A lot of heat is dissipated, especially in the exhaust valves on air-cooled motors. So uh, valve adjustment is very critical. The play and the gap is very critical. I'm bringing it around to cylinder number one. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, here comes our timing mark. You got a little notch in the in the uh, crank pulley there. That's your main one, and you bring that right up to the split in the case. Okay, and what we do to make sure, I reach back here to the plug number one, follow that wire, trace that wire all the way over to where it comes onto the cap, which is right here from the number one cylinder. Pull the cap off, that rotor should be right there, right ready to fire under number one. So now you're ready for number one. Both of those valves are closed. That's what we want to do. Okay. Now we're set. So each time we each time we would do one of these, we come back and we'll crank it counterclockwise, and then the next one will be number two, then number three, and number four. That makes this very easy. I've uh, seen a lot of people adjust these in the firing order. They go from one, then they go over to four, then you know, you just run it backwards and go one, two, three, four. So I just I just let that sit there. That's just what I do. Yeah, now I gotta come under here and pop the valve cover gasket. Or pop the valve cover, or I should say. They got a spring, big heavy spring. This is where I put my screwdriver. And just pull your screwdriver down. That pops that spring down. Sometimes these little puppies pop right off. Sometimes not. You just kind of got to work them. Okay. And there it is. And up, up cuff comes the old valve cover gasket. And I'm going to slide back out here for a minute. And I'll show you what we do here. This is the old gasket. This is a good way to tell how your engine is running temperature-wise. It's still got a lot of suppleness to it. That's not. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It also fell out on its own. If your engine's running really, really hot, these puppies will be baked solid. As soon as you bend it, it'll just crumble and crisp. Sometimes they'll they'll cement themselves in here, and then what you got to do? They cement themselves in here because your engine's running so hot. You got to kind of break it right about there in that tab. And then you get yourself a scraper or a screwdriver. 
if you and you take your screwdriver and you just and you can scrape it all the way around all the way around and it'll come off then you want to clean it up now obviously mine's been running pretty cool here but you see see how that broke there so you should be running a little hot but if yours is really crispy critter I mean that's just that's just it'll come out like this and it'll be oh my gosh it'll stick here it'll it could this could take if you do it by hand this could take five ten minutes to really get this if you guys got carburetor cleaner and or you can hot tank your you just boom dig it in it's, it's yeah just dip it in there and I just like to clean these all off real good you get to see your oil in there you get to see the condition it's in if it needs changing nice and clean in here no um, sludge no grit no dirt particularly sludge that means your oil's not being changed enough you should be always nice and clean nice and nice and clean and we're almost done with this now here's what we're going to do here's a tip i give to people a lot of people like to use gasket sealer in here of various kinds gasket cinch is usually the most popular i don't uh, i'm not a big fan of those the reason being because if you seal your gasket in here and your engine runs hot, you will have tons of trouble scraping it out. Trust me. But here's what I do. Because you've got to keep these guys in place, right? Otherwise, they'll just fall out. So I use my molly grease. Oh, this is Stalu molly grease. It has molybdenum disulfide and graphite in it for constant velocity joints wheel bearings, ball bearings, anything that is under extreme pressure and temperature. I believe its drop point is over 380 degrees. Once again, that's Stay Lube Extreme Pressure Molygraph with molybdenum disulfide and graphite added. Molybdenum disulfide is the additive. Thank you, Mechanic Bruce. It acts a lot like Luber plate. Those that know Luber plate that's special. That stuff is expensive. Why? Because the grease actually gets in between the molecules of the metal for a lifetime, lifetime lubrication. I learned that building water meters in 74, 75 when I was introduced to it. Luber plate is a very white looking grease. It almost looks like facial cream. Opposite of this, but uh, just a little bit of it. And it actually gets into the metal. Developed during World War II, I believe. And I just put little dabs Right, one right there, and sometimes, and this grease is good stuff, so if it gets in your oil, no biggie, this is the best grease out there, it's Molly Lube, this is what I use in my front wheel bearings, this is uh, the only grease you guys should be using on your CV joints if you have 68 and later, or 69 and later bugs with the constant velocity joints, so, and now, you just put this little guy in here, the, the gasket in there, and you just kind of press it down. It should fit a good a good a good valve cover gasket should be a nice thick cork should not be paper thin and it should fit really nice and snug almost a little too snug okay so here we are <clears throat> down underneath here and we're looking at uh, the valves for cylinder number one the ones on the outside are always the exhaust the ones on the inside are the intake so these these two are intake this is intake number one this is intake number two exhaust number one exhaust number two okay back to number one here these are your rocker arms. I push down on these as much as I can to take out any potential slop. And I take my feeler gauge and you run it between your adjuster foot and your valve with the six thousandths blade. You should have a little resistance. Number one exhaust, perfecto. That's real nice. A lot of people, this is where it comes into an individual mechanics here, folks. A lot of guys like to adjust these a little tight where it takes more, um, a little more force to get this blade through, but it's still a six thousandths. I would consider this a loose six thousandths. But again, if they're too tight, you're gonna burn a valve, you blow your engine. I mean, you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna burn your engine if you burn a valve. If uh, they're too loose, they're just a little noisy. If they're really loose, you're gonna lose horsepower because your valve's not opening and closing all the way. And this one here, this is my intake. And it's about, it's, these, are two, these two are perfect. Number one's running perfect. And I just double check my exhaust. That's a little that's got a little a little less drag than my intake. Because a lot of the heat, again, is dissipated through the exhaust valves in these cars. Any any air cooled motor. I don't care who's who it is, who makes it. Okay, so that's number one. Now what we're gonna do is go up 
back on top. I'm going to rotate counterclockwise to number two, which will close both of these because right now one of these seems to be open. Feels like the exhaust is open a little bit because this this would be firing. I don't know if this is an exhaust, you know, and it's I don't have to look at the manual on that. But anyway, uh, go back, rotate it to number two, and these two will be ready to go. I'll push down on these, and we're in the valves in there. If you want to stay down here, that's fine with the photo thingy, and I'll just go up and rotate counterclockwise 180 degrees. Actually, let's go upstairs both of you. I need to show you something, guys, anyway. Okay, so now we're on top here, and we're going to rotate it counterclockwise to get to cylinder number two for that valve adjustment. So this is your top dead center, right, because you had the little notch in your crank. Some of these cranks, these older cranks, will have two notches and then a notch over here, or three notches, or either way. So I marked it with a piece of uh, some paint there. And now we're going to rotate it 180 to get to number two, and this is where that other notch will come in. Here it comes, and we bring that to the case split right about there. Me thinks. Yeah, that's where the case is split, right here, and you're going to meet this. That's a pretty crude mark, but, you know, you, you get a little bit. This isn't like a super racing engine. Okay, so we go back here just to double check. Now, did my rotor on my distributor go back, backwards, about 90 degrees? Sure did. And we're going about, and if you want to double check yourself, crew, and go back here, kind of slip the cap on, it looks like it's this guy back here. You can trace that wire, and as we trace it, we're going to end up right here at number two. So that's a good way to double check yourself. And when you get underneath there, those valves will be closed. If they're not, then you're off. But that's, just, that's how you basically do it. And then I go back under there, and, I sh and what you saw on number one is what I do on all of them. And uh, that's basically really it. Now, notice I just checked them. I didn't literally adjust them. Uh, even though it calls for an adjustment every 3,000 miles. Uh, if it ain't, If it don't need wrenching on I don't wrench on it so they were fine there's no need to no need to deal with them if they're running fine so I'll do that now if I happen to run into one where I actually need to adjust it we'll start the video again because that's that's a different procedure and that's why you would need your 13 millimeter and you would need one of these and actually I kind of work it like this I'm getting ahead of myself but actually MVW makes what they call a valve adjusting tool which has one of these little guys in there and it's got kind of like a little cap wrench that will catch that nut or that uh, yeah the nut as you adjust your adjusting foot but if that happens if not happy farfig nugget every 3,000 miles adjust them change the oil okay alright let's Okay, so we didn't have any valves that we really needed to adjust, but we checked them all, and they were all within the limit of six thousandths clearance. That's point zero zero six on your feeler gauge, crew. Okay, so I just clean off the mating surface here on the head because we're going to pop the valve cover back on. The gasket's in place. Just slip that little guy right up there like that. There you go. There's a little play, but not too much. Bring that spring up. And hold it in place. Slip the screwdriver underneath the spring. And just lift up. And it's in place. In operation, this should be really nice and dry. Oh, this should be nice and dry. So we got some head leakage back here, but that's okay. Camera operator is going to stay right here, and I'm going to go start her up. And what we're going to find out is whether she leaks or not. This is how we find out if the gaskets were all done right, because you really don't get to see them as you put this on. If it's going to leak anywhere, it's going to shoot out here pretty good. Right oh. where my fingers are going. Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> well, it'll, it'll run over this. It'll run over this. Yeah. Okay. No leak there. And no leak there. Now, come on back here for a second. 
We're all done. Okay, so that's uh, that's a valve adjustment. No leakage or anything. Uh, but there was one vital step that I forgot to tell everybody. I didn't put my uh, distributor cap back on. So, also as a tribute to these VWs, it was running with this thing flopping around. So you just put it back on and do your clips. I'm going to kill my wife because I need both hands. There's one clip. There's two clips. And we're ready to go. Well, and that's something was running with the distributor cap. Running pretty good with the distributor cap just flopping around here. <laughs> <laughs> so that is it. <laughs> yeah, after you're done, make sure you can cap that guy up and then uh, turn it on and uh, check both of these sides and no leakage at all. Like I say, if it leaks, it'll leak pretty good. That's it. 3,000 happy more miles and we adjust the valves, change the oil again. Thank you. Happy perfect.